mega viral for responding to Elon Musk and saying, hey, put me in charge of slashing that Pentagon budget. Elon actually replied. He asked for suggestions. Don Jr. replied something like this is being considered or it was considered. Uh, Destiny, you responded to the entire thing by saying sigh, S-I-G-H. The left is all over the place and things are getting intense. Cenk Yoger surprised everyone by showing some unexpected support for Elon Musk, while Destiny, as usual, keeps throwing shade at conservatives. On The David Pakman Show, Cenk didn't hold back and called out Destiny, highlighting just how chaotic things are getting on their side. Let's dive into the clip and see how it all played out. I think my first question to you, Cenk, is do you think they genuinely want to cut defense spending or this entire department of grift the edgelords thing is just really about cutting social programs at the end of the day? Or do you, do you really think the Pentagon is something they would cut? So um, let's look at this conversation, right? So um, first of all, why do I call Trump a fake populist? Because he goes rah rah average man, which I think is smart political strategy uh, because he's focusing on things that are popular. That's what populism is. Wow, that's rocket science to figure that out is to the correct electoral strategy. But then when he gets in office, what's his number one priority? Corporate tax cuts and delivering for his donors like Miriam Adelson. He put in Marco Rubio, Elise Stefanik, Mike Waltz, Mike Huckabee, all Team Miriam, neocon war hawks. What happened? I thought you were anti-war. And part of what I'm doing here is the, some of the right wing populists actually do agree with us on some issues. So for example, anti-corruption, when I po point out that Miriam Adelson gave Trump $137 million, and then he gave her four appoint appointees, uh, people even on the right wing go, yeah, that sucks. And that, you know, we we don't agree with Trump there. And that that's a stunning turn of events. I've never seen that happen before, but it's actually genuinely happening online. And you should give them some credit for that. Now on, uh, on, on cutting, what I'm asking is, do you guys really mean it? And so if you really mean it, most of the corruption is in the Pentagon. So that's where all the pork goes, because if you question that pork, they go, you're endangering our national security. You're putting all of our lives in, in, on the line, et cetera. So they stuff it full of pork. So I said, look, guys, if you're going to do cuts, let's start at the Pentagon. I can cut $400 billion overnight for you. And what it's doing is, is putting them to the test. Do you really mean it or don't you? And so couple of surprising things happened from there. First of all, if you look at uh, my comment section, right-wing populists actually do mean it. So this is going to be really, really interesting. So then Elon and Don Jr. say, yeah, yeah, we mean it too. And they follow through on at least one of the proposals that, that I uh, that I mentioned, which was, hey, you know, a lot of these contracts go to these defense contractors because the generals, after they retire, go to work for those defense contractors. And that gives them an incentive to sell us out and to buy all these bloated programs because they're literally going to get paid by those same companies. And if they say, yes, you're right, which is where they are today, and we should stop that, so that conflict of interest, well, that's a left-wing position that we've been arguing for 20 years. I'll take it. That's fantastic. And that's the unity that mainstream media pretended that they were in favor of, but only when they were doing corporate deals for tax cuts for the rich, et cetera. Now we have some potential actual unity. At the same time, I'm not a sucker. I've been in this game a long time. So is it possible that they don't cut the Pentagon and instead they cut social spending? Oh, of course, of course, that's more likely, right? But at least the very first conversation we're having online about what to cut is the Pentagon. Perfect. You can't ask for anything better from the left wing populist uh, way of looking. Cenk Yoger raised some strong criticisms of Trump, calling him a fake populist. But it's worth looking at what Trump has actually done. He's taken on some issues that resonate with people across the board, like challenging government waste and the military industrial complex. Term limits, for example, are a popular idea with many Americans, regardless of their political leanings. These are things that most people agree need attention. What makes Trump stand out? is that he doesn't fit the mold of a traditional politician. He, he operates outside the usual system, which is why many see him as a disruptor, someone who isn't beholden to the same structures as others in Washington. The same could be said for figures like Elon Musk. They spark debate because they don't follow the standard playbook, which is both their appeal and their controversy. Um, 
The discussion around cutting Pentagon waste is particularly interesting. If leaders were to reduce excessive spending in the defense budget, it would challenge a lot of the narratives we've heard, especially about Trump. It's an opportunity to question the assumptions about who is truly working to change the system. What's your take on all this? Do you think these moves could actually bridge some divides, or is it just more of the same political back and forth? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Well, Destiny, tell us about the reason for the sigh. Is it that you think Jenks being naive, that they're not really going to cut, or, or that he's barking up the wrong tree here? Um, I don't think they plan on cutting. I don't even like the conversation. I feel like um, there's so many issues I have with this. I, when progressives and... Um, really with anybody talks about taxes or anybody talks about budgets, like the conversation, people always talk about like taxes, like they're either this like tool of punishment or self-flagellation, or it's like this noble way of, I think that we should figure out what are the government programs that we want to fund and why, okay? So do we want a uh, single payer healthcare? Do we want expansion to Medicare? Do we want to do SNAP and WIC and, and you know, benefits programs? Do we want to have uh, tax subsidies for electric cars and solar? Like we figure these things out. Once we figure that out, we have our liabilities, okay? This is how much we owe. And then we need to figure out how do we raise the money for it, okay? Do we tax people? Do we tariff? Do we whatever? Like, how do we, how does the government fund these programs? That should be the totality of the conversation about taxes. These arbitrary obsessions with like, we got to slash the Pentagon by X dollars. We have to slash the military. Like, why? Why? What do we, how, what do you want to cut? Like, let's talk about that. Do we, like, was the F-35 program a mistake? Uh, do we want to have, uh, you know, like no no military presence around the world? Do we shut down all of our bases? Do we want to have uh, no more funding towards any type of participation? They're like, what do we actually want to cut? Because the random thing, like imagine, and it's so crazy to me too, especially because like Jenk is a business owner and all these other guys are business owners. You, like you walk in, you ask, you say, okay, I come into your business and, and you want to cut things. Like, is it just, I'm going to cut 40% of my budget. Did you just fire randomly, like 40% of your employees? Or like, no, well, you look at departments maybe that aren't making money. You look at parts of your business maybe you don't need, but it's never just like randomly like, okay, we're going to cut half our thing today, you know, unless you've got like a loan that's being called in and you have to <laughs> pay up or something. Uh, so, I, I mean, like that's one part of it. Um, the second part of it is, um, uh, it's okay, so, far, so to be fully transparent, I'm unhinged now when it comes to dealing with conservatives. I'm more concerned about turning out base than ever appealing to these insane people. Um, there is no principled foundation to what conservatives believe regarding anything having to do with foreign policy or the military. The exact same people who will say there were no wars under Trump will ignore the fact that he hid how much more we were drone striking people in Yemen. People will say there are no more wars under Trump and they'll ignore the fact that we allowed, um, you know, the allies that we had in Syria to die. We'll say no more wars under Trump. We'll ignore the fact that Iran attacked Saudi Arabia, um, that the United States bombed a Syrian airport, that Assad was chemically gassing his people still, that border riots were raging on in the Gaza Strip. Like, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. So for the first time ever, Russian troops were engaging with Ukrainian uh, troops directly in the Donbass, I think in 2018. This idea that like Trump has some allegiance to some foreign policy position where it's like, oh, we're going to cut military spending is absolutely not true. Well, and, even and, more so yeah. then, I mean, if that's true and they'll consider cutting something because Jenk's bringing it up, isn't that a reason for him to be involved rather than saying, uh, oh, this is a waste of time? I'm, I don't know. I mean, I, I just I I just hope that people are aware of what I just I just need people to be aware of like what's of like what's going on. Like if you get like uh, if you get like, oh, well, they managed to cut 50 million dollars from the military budget and that money, you know, was like all earmarked for the VA or something like that's not a good thing. Right? Like we want, um, you, you know, we want something. I wish that people just spoke in policies more rather than like we need to tax billionaires because we hate them or like we need to give tax cuts to billionaires because they save us or we need to do it. It's like what, what are the policies that we want to support? What do we want to cut from the military? What do we like? That's I think the more important conversations. Jenk? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, unfortunately, this is proving uh, at least part of Maga's point here, which is Destiny is now defending the Pentagon against cuts. Like, that's the neocons. And then we brought in the neocons, the Liz Cheney's and the... Destiny and Jenk Yoger got into it on the David Pakman show, and it really showed how divided the conversation on the left has become. Jenk brought up some solid points about cutting wasteful spending in the Department of Defense, pointing out how taxpayers' money is often blown on projects that don't address key issues, like the southern border. It's the kind of common sense take that you don't hear often enough. Destiny, on the other hand, wasn't having it. He seemed more focused on defending the status quo, which sparked a bit of tension. It's interesting because Jenk's argument wasn't exactly radical. 
most people would agree that we could tighten up defense spending. Yet Destiny's response made it clear just how divided these conversations can get. At the end of the day, it feels like there's no clear direction or leadership, and everyone's pulling in different directions. What do you think? Should we rethink where all this money is going, or does Destiny have a point? Share your thoughts below.